Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm super excited um, for today's video. This video is going to be all about my tips and tricks that have helped to take me from a 35-30 10k runner down to a 31-23 10k runner. And I want to help take you to your next PB. So here's all of my tips and tricks to help improve your 10k. <laughs> So guys, my PB at the start of 2021 was 35.30 over the 10k distance and recently I managed to set myself a new PB of 31.23 so I want to give you as much knowledge or as, or as much help as I can give you to help take you to your next PB. So let's get into this. So my first tip is that consistency is key. You will not be able to run quick no matter the distance, 5k, 10k, marathon, if you do not have consistency in your training. So my week consists of two to three hard sessions. This can be an interval, tempo, um, hills. So a session that just takes you to that pace slash intensity, um, which you're kind of going above and beyond your race pace. This gets your body so used to running at those higher levels, which will just help improve your pace on race day. The next thing that I love to include in my training is a long run. So that's typically on a Sunday, but a long run by definition is just your longest run of the week. This does not have to be the same as anyone else's long run. This can be quite a personal run to you. So my long runs range from anything from kind of 10 miles to 20 miles, depending on what I'm training for. But you need a long run in your training just to build that aerobic base, get your heart pumping, get the lungs breathing, and that will definitely help take you to your next PB. The final thing that I love to include in my week in terms of running is two to three easy runs so your body needs time to recover and without that recovery time you're not going to be able to run as quick as you would like not every run has to be at 100 percent and also with these slower recovery runs i think it gives the body a really good chance to flush everything out of the legs and also just build up those miles in the legs get the legs used to running some miles that maybe aren't as quick as your normal miles but they definitely help to improve your overall speed just by giving the body some time to recover. This tip is all about recovery. Recovery is so, so important. You can use things to aid your recovery, such as the massage gun, the tiger roll, massage rollers, those sorts of things. Calf guards, all of these things just help to aid your recovery. So recovery starts as soon as the run has finished. So there's plenty of things you can do to aid your recovery, whether it be stretching, a post-run recovery electrolyte drink, an energy bar straight after you run, there's carbs, those proteins which links to the nutrition, but also there's other more active things such as like an ice bath, a bath with some Epsom salts in, that can be a warm bath, doesn't have to be freezing cold every time. I personally really enjoy wearing my recovery sliders, they seemed like a bit of a fad when I first bought them, but they have had plenty of use and they're arguably my most comfortable shoe. They just help to take that pressure out of the feet. I'll show you here. So these are the Hocker um, Recovery Slide 2, I think. Um, I don't know if they've brought out a third one yet or not. Um, but yeah, they're my favorite shoes to wear. I wear them at university and have even had a lecturer bully me um, about them. <laughs> But it was, all, um, it was all a joke, no harm done there. Um, so you may get some funny comments about the slides, but all in all, I think they're really helpful for aiding my recovery. Um, but also a really good thing that you can do is go and see your sports massage therapist because there is nothing better than someone getting their hands on to the different parts of your muscles because they can feel things that your massage roller can't feel. So where you've got those tight knots, those trigger points in your muscles, a massage therapist can really help to get those out. And trust me, you will feel so much better in your next run. The next thing that I would like to talk to you about guys is your nutrition. So nutrition is personal for every body type, exercise, exertion, no matter what you're doing, your diet is gonna be different to the other runners. So the first thing you need to do is research your own needs. Work out how many calories you need to be taking in. Um, and sim I think simply like, if you're doing ultra marathon running, you need loads of carbs. Runners need carbs in general, but if you're going that extra, extra mile, you need to make sure that you're keeping up with your gly uh, glucose, glycogen levels. So really take in those carbs. Trying to cook things with single ingredients is always great. 
Um, I know that most of you have busy lifestyles and cooking a home cooked meal isn't the easiest thing to do during the week, but it can really help just make sure you're cutting out those bad fats, those bad sugars, um, and just keeping your, uh, your meals nice and clean to help get you re uh, recovered for your next run. This doesn't mean that you just need to eat clean foods and only vegetables 24 seven, because I am certainly partial to the odd fats or sugars here or there that um, we would typically think that we need to cut out from our diet completely. But there's so many things of um, good fats, so things like red meat, uh, peanut butter, they can just provide your body with the fat that it needs because your body does need fat to function. Another thing that I like to include, which kind of ties in with the recovery, is like a post-run drink. So I typically like to have, after some harder sessions, a coconut electrolyte drink from uh, a brand called SOS. And also, um, okay, there's a, a few different types of brands that I use for my recovery drinks, which include carbohydrates and protein in the same sort of combination. So these just help to really take me to that next level in terms of recovery um, and, I, and I consume these best within 30 minutes of um, a hard session. So guys, the next thing that I would like to talk to you about is strength and conditioning, also known as S&C in the running world. So over the past six to eight months, I have really been taking my S&C to a new level. And I think if I had to put my recent success to down to anything, it'd be down to S&C and my nutrition. Those are the two things that I've really focused on this year and really helps take me to that next level. So SNC is um, a, t a colloquial term for anything that involves with strengthening the body, conditioning the body for running. This doesn't mean you have to be he uh, lifting heavy weights, um, pounding the gym, it does not mean that at all. So for the first few months, all I was doing at home was just simple core workouts using YouTube videos. My favorite one is from a, a lady called Ashley Conrad. It's just a, a quick 12 minute routine, but it definitely leaves the abs so the idea of improving your core is that you're making your body strong so your running economy becomes so much better because the wasted energy is less less movement um because if you watch anyone like kipchoge Bekele, they're so still their upper body is so still when they're running the arms are moving but that's the only thing that moves the head stays still um, and that's it. So that's what you're aiming towards. If you want to improve your running, you do have to focus on your core and arms as well. This does not mean lifting weights. I don't lift any weights during the week with my upper body. Um, just some core, core stuff, maybe some stuff with a medicine ball um, for things like Russian twists, but I'm not lifting, I'm not bench pressing, I'm not um, doing dumb, dumbbell curls or anything like that. So you don't need to worry about those sorts of things if you're looking just to improve your overall speed. Some really cool um, like core exercises that I use are things like um, glute bridges, quadruped alternatings, clams, res using resistance bands. These are your bread and butter um, when you're doing your strength and conditioning. So I definitely look at investing in some resistance bands. The shorter ones that are like loops, are definitely um, the ones that I would recommend. They're so versatile and they just, they really help take your muscles to that next level. Hey guys, my next tip and arguably the most important one is that wearing a cap backwards is scientifically proven to make you faster. So if you want to run a PB next time you go out on the roads, put your cap on backwards and I promise you it will happen. Next point guys is all about visualization. So a really new thing that I've kind of come onto recently is visualizing what I want to achieve and running it over in my mind over and over again. So just Friday night, the night before my 10K where I ran my 31.23, I was running it through my mind, what I was gonna do at each K, how I was hoping to feel. Um, and that just helps just to get the body ready. You get used to the feeling, you think about how you're gonna feel, you think about your race strategy. So nothing is a surprise on race day, fingers crossed. Um, it does not guarantee that you will do a PB, but it definitely, I find helps. Just gets me focused, motivated, ready to take on my race the next day. But this can also be incorporated with your um, recovery runs, your sessions, thinking about what you're achieving by doing the runs that you're doing, thinking about that finish line feeling, how good you're gonna feel when you get next get your PB, and that can really help to get you through your workouts. My next tip for you guys is that now we're in the 21st century, there is so much data everywhere, we are surrounded with it 24 seven. But my tip related to data is that do not focus on it too much. My Garmin is constantly telling me that I'm being unproductive and that my load is decreasing, despite my load actually increasing. So just trying to take your data into perspective. If you know um, that you can take it with a pinch of salt, then that is great. But not focusing on your data, not obsessing on it too much is a really key thing 
for it helping you to improve your running. My running watch is a Garmin um, 645 Music and it is constantly telling me that I'm not active enough. Um, so really do not listen to your watches in that um, regard and do not beat yourself up um, over what your watch is telling you if it says that you are not doing enough running. Listen to your body, your body is always going to be giving you signals. Um, but at the same time, you can use your watch to, to help you like incorporate data into your training. So I like to use a ballpark figure of hitting at least 50 to 60 miles a week. And it's a really good tool for helping me to just keep track of that. Sometimes you can lose how far you've ran. And also over a session, you can sometimes not realize how many, um, like how far you're actually clocking up. So I run around a track and quite often I get like an extra couple of kilometers just from running around in circles. So my final point, which just helps to tie everything together is that consistency is key. So I have been doing this training that I've been telling you about in this video, the nutrition, the recovery, for at least six to eight months. So this is what's really helped taking my running to the next level. So things are not gonna happen overnight and you definitely should not beat yourself up um, if things are not coming quickly. This has taken me um, a long time to, to get where I am today. I've been running since I was the age of 13. 13 to the age of 20, um, I was pretty much doing everything wrong. I wasn't training properly. I wasn't eating the right things. I wasn't doing the s and I wasn't doing the stretching. Um, and then in the last six months where I've been doing all of the right things, all of the, all of the things that I've told you about in this video, I've just gone from this level up to here. I've really taken um, my running super seriously and it's really paid off. Um, it's like with anything, when you do it properly, it starts off boring, but because you're getting the results, you find it interesting and it all just feeds on from there. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. I hope it's been useful to you. Drop me down in the comments anything that you think that you would like to add to these tips and tricks that can really help take you to that next level. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, guys. Hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. There's going to be plenty more videos like this in the future. I've got a cool video lined up. So I'll catch you around. Peace.